But if I had one number that was like my holy grail for the status and the condition and the health of my business, it would be the CPA. So if you can kind of think of it, pretty much everything is going to fall into one of those two buckets, acquisition or commission. When you generate a referral from one of these lead sources, that acquisition, that, that profitability should be attributed back to the original lead source. All right. Well, let's go ahead and, and get into it here, Dan. So, you know, there's there's a number of different numbers and metrics that we could look at when we're talking about a solar business. I guess maybe the first place to start is just the basic unit economics of a solar project. What should a solar project cost? How much should it cost you to get that customer? And how much commission should you pull per project? So uh, I'll just pose that question to you, Dan. What do you think is a healthy cost per acquisition? And what do you think is a healthy gross commission and what should be sort of your gross profit per solar project? Yeah, great question. So I'll preface too, guys, the a lot of the terms we're going to kind of speak from industry language, a lot of times we're referring to things on a price per watt basis, or sometimes it's just called PPW. Um, but wanting to know things on a price per watt basis. Now, specifically, Joe, about CPA, cost per acquisition. I think we've talked about this before. But if I had one number that was like my holy grail for the status and the condition and the health of my business, it would be the CPA. Because I know that if my cost per acquisition is at a certain price point, really everything is going to be working and functioning properly. Because I know, hey, average commission is this, gross earnings are this, profitability is this, based on that CPA. As the CPA rises and falls, or decreases and increases, that's really where my business is growing or contracting in some way. So what I have really said for a long time, Joe, is a CPA that I am oftentimes targeting is a sub 1500, but ideally sub a thousand dollar cost per acquisition. And when we're talking about that cost per acquisition, we're talking about what was my legitimate all in expense to acquire that business, right? Now, there's a lot of different ways you can measure that. Um, most of the times when I'm measuring CPA, I'm measuring on my marketing budget, right? So any advertising dollars I might've been spending on, let's say Facebook, uh, but it could also be, you know, maybe an agency that I've had to hire to run and manage that advertising, right? That's going to obviously increase my CPA a lot of times. And we can unpack that conversation a little more, but that might increase my CPA, but I really want that CPA with my dollars spent on Facebook, my dollars spent towards agencies managing things for me. Maybe I have a, a an appointment setter or an internal team that's handling these leads and I have to pay them a commission or an hourly rate or some sort of wage for doing the job that they're doing. So I need to factor those things in. And if I look at that at the end of a, a project or the end of a, I typically calculate these a, a lot of times on a monthly basis. I want to know, okay, how much did I spend on advertising this month? How much did I spend on my agency this month? How much did I pay my appointment setters this month? Total that all up, divide that number by the amount of sales. That was my CPA. So that, that number for me, again, ideally is going to be sub 1500, sub a $1,000. There are, have been months in the past where I've seen that number go above 2000, 2500, $3,000. When it gets to that sort of area, I know that something is broken. Something is not working right. It's either maybe our advertising copy, the the creative, the look, the writing, maybe that was misleading. And so it was generating leads, but we weren't actually generating sales. Uh, maybe it was something in my appointment setters functionality of the way they were making the calls. And I want to go back and I want to pull call recordings. I want to listen to things. I want to role play. I want to train on that to help improve. Uh, maybe it was my agency I was working with, just things weren't being managed as well. And so you got to keep a really tight eye on all of those different functions. Um, and so really, again, you just, you got to make sure that that number is an appropriate range. And then I think the other question you would ask Joe too, was a little bit about, you know, you know, total revenue of a project. What I typically would see from that perspective, if we're looking at available sales commissions, generally could be somewhere between five to $7,000 on a, on a total project. It kind of depends on what it is. A lot of our methodology, Joe, I know we price and we calculate things a lot of times on, on percentage basis, and we can maybe talk more about that. Um, but in a five to $7,000 total revenue generated from a project range, 
I would then know if I had an acquisition of a thousand dollars that my profitability on that project might have been four to six thousand dollars. So just it just sort of depends. But how about on your side, Joe? Right, right, and and you're right, Dan. I mean, I know we could we could say the same thing speaking a different language in terms of price per watt. But just to use some round numbers here, let's say we're 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 tar targeting an average ten kilowatt system, right, a ten thousand watt system. And so I know the numbers that I use to keep me in sort of a healthy general range is uh, I want on average about $5,000 total gross commission, and I want my acquisition cost to be about $1,500 or less. So if we're talking price per watt, we want 50 cents per watt total gross commission, and we want 15 cents per watt cost of acquisition or less. You know, in the solar sales business, you really have really just two main expense categories, acquisition cost and commissions that you have to pay out to your sales reps if you have a team under you. So if you can kind of think of it, pretty much everything is going to fall into one of those two buckets, acquisition or commission. Now here at Solar Surge, you might say, well, Joe, you have travel expense. You're going to all these conferences. You have a video editing expense because you got to, you know, put all the YouTube videos out and then you've got, uh, you got to pay your video editor. So there's, there's, you know, payroll expense. In reality, all of that is acquisition cost. Right, so Solar Surge, we we do a video content marketing strategy. That's how customers find us, right? That's how many of you probably found us. Um, but all of the cost that goes into producing the videos, including airfare to get to the conferences, meals that I might spend, hotels, you know, uh, at the conferences, what I pay my editor, what I pay for any kind of video hosting or editing software, all that at the end of the day goes into a bucket called acquisition, right? And if you're doing a different acquisition method, right, you, you may be paying appointment setters, you're, you're buying leads, you're running ads. But at the end of the day, it's going into that bucket that's called acquisition cost. And then you look at that compared to what, what gross commissions that you're able to generate based on all of that activity. You know, so for me, it, it, I'm able to kind of keep the numbers in that healthy range because we do now that we've kind of made the initial investment of the video equipment and a lot of the softwares, it doesn't really cost us that much each video we produce. But there is a cost there. You know, there, there certainly is a cost there. And all of that goes into acquisition. Right. And I think we, we really have to start the conversation there, because if the basic unit economics of the project don't work, if you don't know, hey, if I spend this amount to generate leads, generate opportunities and I can generate commissions of this amount, if, you, if if the basic unit economics don't work, then there's nowhere to go from there anyway, right? You can't scale it up if, if, the, if the, core, the core unit of business doesn't work. So I think that's why I wanted to, to start the conversation there. Uh, Dan, I'll throw it back to you. Yeah, no, that's a great point. I think if you're a, if you're a sales only organization, the reality of it is, is you're not buying materials, you're not buying, you know, you're, you're not paying for labor directly, right? I mean, you, you depending on your accounting methodology, you might justify your install partners as a cost of goods sold where you're hiring them to do a job for you. But you're not, it's an indirect thing. You're not having to pay for it yourself directly. So really as a sales organization, almost every expense that you run through your business probably in one way, shape or form contributes towards your CPA, right? In, in, in most in most cases. Uh, even if that is, hey, I'm going to attend RE plus, or I'm going, I'm, I'm doing this or doing that, you're probably doing that act as a desire to produce, you know, a sale, produce an opportunity. So when I measure everything as well, I look at things monthly, I'll look at things quarterly, and then I will go back and look at my my totals for the entire year. Uh, and one question and statement I wanted to address here was this comment that Whaling City Solar uh, just commented in here and appreciate these numbers. I would say right now, as you're looking at this, a $1,200 acquisition cost is a great number. It's a healthy place to be. But I would say when you mentioned it doesn't include software, 3D, DSM data per opportunity, should it? I would say yes, right? Because you do want to understand both maybe first sort of the direct acquisition cost, right? How much money did I spend on my marketing platform or Energy Sage or whatever you know, provider I'm using, that'll tell you one number, but you don't want to convince yourself and you, you want to make sure you don't fall victim to thinking, oh, hey, my acquisition is only 1200 because you could have this crazy high expense on design softwares and other tools and stuff that you're not properly considering into that variable. And so I'll, I'll a lot of times break them apart in both ways. I want to know, okay, well, what was like the direct activities that led to sales? Was that my advertising, appointment setters, um, you know, and then, it, you know, commissions and stuff being paid. Okay. Like what was that number? But then I also want to know the bigger picture of, Hey, how about all my software tools? How about my DocuSign service? I pay for my CRM platform, my, you know, 
ancillary other, you know, uh, tools that I use, right? Like I want to add all those up and break those down. And I go through this exact exercise on every different marketing or lead channel that I have. And last year for my, my company, Radiant Solar, I mean, we had a lot of different ones we worked with. We had Facebook advertising, we had this agency, that agency, maybe it was energy sage, maybe it was solar reviews, maybe it was referrals, maybe it was uh, homeowners association presentations that we did and we paid referral incentives. So I break all of those down and that's why it's important. Maybe a tip here, when you're tracking your sales, make sure you're tracking exactly what the lead source was. So you can filter these later to go run this report. Cause I would have no idea how to attribute those if I wasn't tracking my lead source properly, but I'll go in and I'll track those things at the end of the year. I'll total everything up and then base. Okay. X amount contributed to this bucket, Y to this bucket, Z to this bucket and figure out, okay, what was the true acquisition cost? The other thing I would make sure to do as well, it's a little hard to track it this way, but when you generate a referral from one of these lead sources, that acquisition, that that profitability should be attributed back to the original lead source. So for example, let's say Whaling City you know, Solar, you guys are, are using Energy Sage. If you sell a customer on an Energy Sage, you know, an Energy Sage customer, and that Energy Sage customer turns around and passes you a referral, it would make sense to attribute that referral back to Energy Sage as being the lead source. The reason being, and, and I, I would call it a referral as well, but that relationship does affect your Energy Sage outlook, right? Like, what was your CPA from Energy Sage? Because had you not generated the first, you know, uh, sale from Energy Sage, you wouldn't have gotten to the referral later. So sometimes I've made that mistake in the past where maybe I noticed my Facebook advertising was running at $2,000 CPA, but I had also generated five or six referrals, referral sales from leads that came from Facebook originally. If I didn't attribute that back properly, I, I would look at Facebook and say, oh, I need to cut this off. The numbers aren't good. But the reality of it is, is no, when I add in those five or six, that $2,000 now drops down lower and it actually is good. So you just need to make sure you clearly understand your strategy as far as also how you're trying to generate your referrals and really making sure, hey, anytime I spend dollars on leads, those are gold. I really, really, really need to also tap into a referral opportunity with those people, right? If you're doing a great service, you're performing a, a phenomenal job for your, your client, why wouldn't they want to you know, past one, two, three of their most, you know, trusted people to you. I've had some referral partners or, you know, customers of mine that have given me 10, 12, 15 referrals over the years. And I'm glad to pay referral incentives to those people as well, because there is a mutual benefit all, you know, all around. So a little side tangent about that, but just make sure you're attributing that as well. All right. I hope you're getting some great value from today's video content. Now, if you would like to have your product or your business or technology featured on the Solar Surge channel, feel free to reach out to us at the link below so you can set up a call with our media team to talk about your marketing goals and how Solar Surge can help you get there. Solar Surge is the leading online community in the US residential solar and energy storage space. And so if you'd like to get your product, business, or technology in front of our audience, we can help you do that. Uh, again, feel free to reach out to our media team at the link below or email media at solarsurge.net.